Okay, hi guys, how's it going? So here's a quick video about 10-bit versus 8-bit uh, for your color. Um, now this video has come about it's because I've been working on a, uh, a video for color across uh, Panasonic and uh, Sony cameras, the two cameras that I use the most. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, it's a real rabbit hole of complexity and permutations. And you know, as soon as you start looking into lots of different LUTs available and obviously all the different profiles that the cameras have and lighting situations, it becomes um, a bit unwieldy, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but this is just, uh, I wanted to highlight one of the things that you, you hear about and a lot of people know about about, but I haven't seen that many good demonstrations of it and that is the problem with 8-bit uh, uh, color when you compare that to 10-bit for certain uh, grading and profile uh, conditions. So basically to sum up, 8-bit struggles when you have to make large color adjustments to your shot. So be that because your original um, footage is very, very flat. So you have to change things a lot to correct that to make it look more, uh, you know, appealing and more natural. Or be it, or be that that you're actually putting, you know, a, a real look on something and you're really, really changing something up a lot. That's when the 8-bit footage falls apart. So let me just quickly demonstrate that for you. So here's uh, two quick shots. Uh, they're just really casual shots of my daughter watching TV. One in 8-bit. Uh, these are both out of the GH5, by the way. Uh, one in 8-bit and one in 10-bit, uh, both in Vlog L. Um, now, in you know most other profiles, you know the scene like D and the natural and all the rest of it, um, the 8-bit and the 10-bit, ta the they don't really look that much different, and you're not really going to notice a huge uh, difference unless you're really, really pushing that. So I wanted to choose the Vlog as it's a, a better demonstration of um, of the problem. So first of all, also look at the lumine luminetry scopes here. So here we have the 10-bit. And here we have the 8-bit. Uh, you can see some of the banding slightly more visible in the 8-bit. Bear that in mind for when we we start to um, change the footage and, and grade it. So first of all, let's add a LUT. Now, the Panasonic LUT isn't too bad. Uh, I've also got a bunch of other LUTs. This Leeming LUT's uh, pretty good. So let's pop this Leeming LUT on um, so that corrects it and gets it better. Right? This isn't just the Leeming LUT, by the way. I've done some other tweaks as well just to... Um, uh, control the leaming LUT because the leaming LUT does a few things I don't like. But anyway, so this is uh, just the leaming LUT uh, and a couple of tweaks on it. Now let's have a look at the, the footage. It doesn't look too bad. There's a couple of green patches. If we look at the side of her face just here, uh, as you can see, there's a couple of kind of green patches in the shadows there. And also if we have a look at this couch in the 8-bit, we've kind of got this sort of slightly greenish um, blockiness in the in the shadows now i think there is some green there reflected green light in that couch uh, but it's the way it goes from one color to the next it, it's that transition that makes it look very clunky and clumpy um, compare that to the 10 bit and we have much smoother transi transitions between the colors now let's have a quick look at the uh, luminetry scope and as you can see here's the 10 bit and here is the 8 bit and you know, it, as soon as you look at that, it's as clear as day. You can see what's happening. That it, it just does not have the color information to be able to stretch that far to um, to have nice transitions between one one color and the next. And that is why we're having some issues. And we can demonstrate that even better if we put them. Put I'm going to put a very heavy contrast, um, high contrast look on this. You know, you know, it's not going to make it look nice, but it's just to demonstrate the the problem for um, for YouTube, so you can really see what I'm talking about clearly here. So here we have a 150% contrast added to that. Um, if we have a look at the uh, the footage again, so here is the 10 bit. As you can see, you know it looks horrible. You know she's all ruddy in the face and everything. But you know, regardless, let's say that uh, you know that's let's just pretend that is the look we want. Is actually holding up okay. The transition between the colors is fairly fairly kind of uh, smooth, even though we've we've taken a very very flat image. Remember, let's have a look at the um, the flat log footage. We've taken that and we've taken all the way up to this. Um, so the transitions between the colors is fairly smooth. Uh, now let's have a look at the the 8 bit. And this is, as you can see, we've got sort of yellow patches in the skin. We've got these sort of greeny blue and pink patches in the couch. The shadows almost have a kind of a rainbow quality to them where they're, they're going from one color. They're going from purple to blue to green to orange. Uh, and on the wall up here, we've got some nasty sort of clumping of colors. As you can see, it just it just starts to fall apart. So 
that is the the issue that people find with with 10 bit um again you know i'm not saying that you'd want to grade anything as heavily as that it, it doesn't look good but those same problems are visible in just with a standard fairly natural looking grade you can see the same problems they're just not quite as apparent because you're not boosting them quite as much um so yeah so that's all i want to do is just highlight the the real difference uh between 10 bit and 8 bit um when you're uh, filming in, in a very flat profile. Now this operates the same with S-Log2 and with S-Log3. Um, now S-Log3 has more dynamic range but it is much flatter. Now I've got the Sony a7 III so I, I, I don't have the option to film 10-bit uh, with my, my Sony. Obviously some Sony cameras do. Um, and generally I would advise if you have uh, something like a7S2 or a Sony a7 Mark III um, I would advise not using S-Log3 because even though it has more dynamic range, because it's such a flat profile, if we have a look at it out of camera, it's a very, very flat profile, um, it starts to fall apart because it's in 8-bit. So when we add a, a grade, um, we start to see some of the same problems. If we add our contrast again, we start to see these yellow patches appearing on the skin and some of the colours, the transitions between the colours, kind of falling apart a little bit. Um, so that's the issue. So S-Log2 holds up pretty well, I would, I would say, because it's not quite as flat. It holds up pretty well. So S-Log2, if you're an 8-bit, is a really good kind of a uh, balanced uh, profile, in my my opinion. There's going to be some situations where you may get a little bit of banding in S-Log2, um, but it's definitely better than S-Log3. Uh, the the V-Log coming out of camera is very, very flat, um, much like the S log three that is why it has um, has these problems so that's why if you have the option and you're filming in log or you're putting a very heavy grade on it use 10 bit if you can because it really does make a difference so anyway guys hope that was useful I just wanted to demonstrate uh, this bit of information that kind of a lot of people know about that um, 8 bit falls apart in uh, in log but you know, it's just nice to then see exactly what the, the problem is and then hopefully kind of avoid that problem yourself in the future. Anyway, guys, I um, hope that's useful. Peace out. And yeah, keep your eye open for my color video because it's going to be it's going to be quite in depth and there's going to be a lot of information in there. I'm looking at lots of different LUTs, um, things like that. Uh, I don't know when it's going to get finished because it's, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a bottomless hole of information at the moment. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to get this very quick one about 8-bit, 10-bit stuff out there. Okay, guys, peace out, and I'll speak to you later. Bye.